When I was around 10 years old, my dad built a layout in the spare room where we used to live, where I grew up in Derbyshire. I used to help him with the uh, scenic items and the buildings. It was great fun watching this layout develop over time. As my brother grew up, obviously he wanted the room for himself, because he used to share a room, the same bedroom. And subsequently, the layout had to be dismantled around 1981-1982. I really lost interest in model rows after that for the next 30 years or so, until 2008. And a friend gave me a DVD of this new concept called DCC Sound. The first locomotive I bought was this uh, Bikeman Class 47. Now I bought this, it's a model zone model, limited edition um, Union Jack Silver Jubilee of 1977. I bought this <laughs> before I had any layout to build it on, which is a bit silly really, but I, was, I saw this on a display case in model zone and it's just a fantastic model. So I bought this model as I say, without running it on any layout at all. Um, it's really what inspired you to build the layout, because obviously you've got a locomotive, you need something to uh, run it on, it's no good being static. So I had this uh, sound chipped about a year later, uh, 2009, at Olivia's Trains, and it's a pretty good sound. I'll just demonstrate this right now. Well, that's built in a garage. I used to be a little playroom for the children when they were little. I converted in this into the layout. We needed insulation in here. I see this bit's not finished yet, but I'll just guide you around. Show you what's going on here. Give you like an aerial view. Construction is mainly plyboard, but I built a frame underneath which allows for wiring. As you can see, there's a wiring underneath there. You've got to build a strong frame. I've seen people make layouts and the layout bows for any damp weather conditions. Um, you need to get the board sturdy, so build, build a good frame. The first section I got cracking with this section here through the countryside. Um, when I drew out the plans, I wanted a couple of bridges on here, rivers and road. And it just cuts lovely through the countryside here. There's a few cows there. And a cattle creep, I think they're called. What I've done here, I'll just pull back. I've actually dropped the frame down. You see that? The frame's dropped down from the other frames to give that effect of the track being raised. Now here, you've got a Hornby... Um, a bridge which is made of resin I've actually converted that from two bridges because it was double track the um, one that Hobby do was sig uh, single track I'll just have a look at that the river here which I'm eventually going to have some figures and the pub next door probably a few people having some beers there fishermen or something um, this bridge here is a Wilts, Wills kit that I've weathered and painted uh, with some extra additional brick walling so another bit of kit bashing here for the embankment obviously I've covered that in um, shrubbery and stuff like that hedges foliage what do you want to call it the actual embankment was made of polystyrene cut to shape shaped to the shape of the banking obviously this bit was cut out for the bridge as well as the other bit there, for the um, metal tie bridge covered in plaster of Paris, track glued on top and then obviously the grass 
um, and foliage was added afterwards. There's a little kettle creep there, I think that's by Will's kits as well. Just all adds to the effect on that section. So do the cows. They've even got cow pats down there. <laughs> Just a bit of realism. There you go. Can't get much more real than that, can you? Obviously, the tracks are the first thing you put down. Now, people use different kinds of underlay. I've used a Gauge Master uh, underlay with a granite. This is superb. It cushions the sound, which is brilliant. And I think once you've weathered it with earthy weathers, earthy coloured weather, should I say, and oils, oil colours, it makes it more realistic. Just zoom in there for you. There's a bridge. On the other side, got that going into the tunnel there. Weathering the track makes it much so realistic rather than a toy into a model. There it goes into the tunnel. The point motors I've used on the layout are tortoise. They give a very realistic effect when you throw the arm. There you go. And back again. Very easy to fit. Uh, you have to take the spring out of the uh, point here. I've used uh, Pico points, I highly recommend them, very good points. And as I say, tortoise point motors are very easy to fit and um, wire up. I'll just focus on the bridge here to the embankment parts. Now, this was a bit of kit bashing here. The main structures are a, a triangle type Hornby railway bridge, which has been on the market for years, very plasticky, uh, comes in a very toy like brown colour. Oh, what I've actually done is I've weathered that, painted it, make it more realistic. These bits here are part of the wheels kit that I've added for more realism for the banking. And then we've got some very cheap plastic uh, supports support girders which have painted and weathered added that to the kit and it, it makes a more realistic bridge than the plastic so-called like toy you get for non-serious modelers I'm quite sort of chuffed with that really what I've tried to replicate here is a similar scene to um, Sheffield Midland Station where there's a cutting on either side there are these uh, granite stone walls, dry stone walls I think they call it the approach to Sheffield Midland from, coming from north to south, the catacombs, there's so many tunnels and arches etc so I was in, quite inspired by that, I've seen other railway scenes similar to those as well so this cutting effect here was generally inspired by that The main focus of this layout I wanted to be was the station. Uh, I want to put a lot of detail in here, I've only just started really. But basically there's six platforms here, uh, 3D and U uh, platforms, um, two, three main lines. Uh, just focusing, it's mainly Metcalf and super quick kit buildings, which are cardboard, that I've sort of hacked and chopped around to suit the design of the layout, just focusing on that for you there's the super quick one I think these are ideal because you can 
uh, cut them down to size or adapt them which way you, you particularly like. On the north end obviously you've got a signal box for the junction with a gantry, I'll go through that shortly. And you just run down the platforms here with the lighting, there's going to be benches there, station name which I've not decided yet, so I need to come up with a good name. And that goes right through the terminus ends, straight through from the MGR through the tunnel there, and there's a, another main line going through this way as well. That's the car park. Just focus on one of the platforms here, so you've got coke machines and vending machines. There's a lot more details are going on, so there's no people on here yet. Um, platform tractors and brute trolleys have got to be added at some stage when Backman bring them out. At the terminus side, there's three terminus points here. I bought these really good lights from uh, Express Models to say where to stop, basically. I think they're superb. Now corner fillers always seems to be a problem on people's layout. What I've done here, I've cut this into a bridge to go over a little street cameo scene if you like, in the corner. That seems to be going off into the distance in the backdrop. Just focus on that for you. There's a Bachmann scenic um, disused industrial building there. Next to that you've got Ten Commandments warehouse fronts but you can paint yourself, a larger one there. I'll just focus, there's a little road down there, if you can see this. I'll try and focus that in for you. A little scene going on there, obviously there's going to be people added to that, and little scenes going off there, which I've got to do yet. Take this round. Try and focus in there, I don't know if you can see that's a light. There's a little uh, road down there as well. The corner fill at the northern end of the layout. I've got a small river here. Or stream, it's about very dirty water in there, coming through an outlet. And then you've got in the foreign corner a uh, crop field, I think it's corn or wheat in there. And then you've got the tunnel going out into the garden. And right in the corner there, you've got a little depot, a yard, builder's merchant yard. Assuming that for you. On the wire fence, the factory or building there. And then you've got a block of flats by Backman Seamcraft, which is superb. On the other end of the layout is another corner filler, which has got the Metcalf Low Relief pub and shop buildings, which I think are excellent. Just zoom in there for you. There you go, goes to that end. A bit detailed yet, of course. The eastern end of the layout, the corner filler there, is obviously the railway goes through the tunnel. Uh, we've just got the corner filler as a field with some sheep in there. But it seems to do the trick, just fills that space in quite nicely. It was essential I had uh, working prototypical signals on the layout. This one you're looking at here is a Traintronics 3 aspect colour light signal with a right hand root indicator. Now, underneath the board, if you look very closely, is a sensor, an infrared sensor built by Heathcote Electronics and basically when the train pass, passes over that it changes the aspect of the signal. I'll just demonstrate with my hand. There you go. Back to red when the train goes over and it'll go through the sequence amber to green. You can adjust the time on the pot underneath on this, the super little uh, bit of kit. Uh, the indicator is wired up to the point when it swings the arm so, and back again off. Apart from the train tronic signals, uh, there's a bespoke made custom built gantry which was built by Roger Murray. I believe he sold the business onto Absolute Signals. Uh, this is a superb bit of kit here. He's built with the uh, cages with the ladders there. Basically, you've got three, three aspect signals for the station platforms. A theatre box, which I'll demonstrate shortly, and two shunting signals at the side of the other two lights there. Just to take a quick look around here, it's a superb bit of kit. I really reckon this company, they're very good. You've got the gantry here, trying to focus into that. Now you have to measure these up precisely to fit with your layout. You can see some of the wiring underneath there. I've had three or four 
different type of gantries built. I'll demonstrate those shortly. Just a quick demonstration of the theatre box here. Uh, the three settings. I believe the new ones now you can have uh, numerous settings there. But basically, I've got platform three, main line, and S for shunting. And that's done by a rotary pot switch on the control panel. The other signals I had built by Roger Murray was this um, twin uh, tower, if you like to call that, gantry, twin arm gantry, should I say. Again, that's got shunting signals at the side of the three aspect starter signals. Again, this was measured one arm slightly longer than the other, just to reach over the platform. Again, you have to custom design this with the correct measurements. Uh, it did a superb job. It's a quick demonstration of this signal here. There's a green shunting signal. Yeah, I highly recommend these models. Very good. The one next to that is a platform starter. The slight arm on there with the shunting signal underneath. Down this side, of the other end of the platform is the same signal again, but opposite way around. Just a quick demonstration on the lighting. Obviously I wanted to use proper platform lights. These are from Volmer, I believe it's a German company. And they're all working. 12 volts I believe. And there's LEDs in the building. I'll just quickly demonstrate that for you. There we go. And I put LEDs under the canopies. And it gives that wonderful warm lighting effect as you would do on a real platform. I'm just focusing the street lights here. These are by CR Signals. These are quite new working lights. You can see that, but they're very good. These are like a sodium yellow colour. Don't really show up on this camera very well, but uh, they are very good. I do recommend these. So I'll be using these on more street scenes as we go along. The control panel for the points is a bit crude at the moment. I've got to sort of redesign this with a more professional fascia but mainly two way switches for the points I've just drawn in rough at the moment, it's going to be finished off, it does a job of what points they're controlling, can easily forget actually, it's quite easy to do with a multitude of points down there so that's the points operation board, next to that you've got the signal operations board uh, basically Econ three way switches for the signals, the ones that aren't connected to the infrared sensors and next to that you've got shunting signals and then you've got the two lighting on and off switches there for the lights that's just on a wooden backing, very easy to do the control unit I'm using to power the locomotives is this Bachmann Dynamis this is the first DCC controller I bought and had it ever since. I'm very pleased with this actually. It was one of the cheapest DCC controllers on the market at the time. I think I paid about £90 compared with about £200, £300 for the other ones. Uh, a decent control unit on the market. There's many functions here, especially for DCC sound. You've got the horns, uh, flange squeal, etc. Things like that. And then you've got the roster with different locomotives and DM units here. A very easy to understand piece of equipment. My motive power fleet I uh, quite like is the Class 37 which I've weathered. This is the Batman Sound uh, Class 37 number 37049. I've weathered that myself. Good sound there. I've had that reblown by house. A superb sound on there. And then you've got the Class 03 Shunter which is limited edition. Number 371. Then you've got a class 25 Bachman. I've had weather by a Lord and Butler. And again, sound chips again. A standard Bachman one, very good sound. You've got an old Hornby class 31. <coughs> the guy just hanging out there, there's some maintenance. Um, that's a Hornby model, as I say. Sound chip by house. And you've seen the shed there, you've got a class 45. Uh, superb sound chip on that by Lego Biffo man. 
Next to that is a Class 50, sound chip by Howes again. And as I said earlier, the Class 47, zooming on that. Limited edition Silver Jubilee. One of my first ones, sound chip by Olivia's Trains, super. Then we've got the Backman Class 40, it's an older model. DCC ready, sound chip by Olivia's Train, super sound on that. Let's just move over <coughs> to the 105 DMU by Bateman. Again, a superb model. This one's sound chip by House, which is a superb DMU sound for the first generation DMUs. Then in the station here, we've got a Class 108, Manchester White Stripes a 108, a sound chip by Olivia's Trains, this one. And a second 108, a limited edition, just focusing on that there, Model Zone model, which have slightly adapted the head codes on there. Again, that's sound chip by Olivia's Trains again, I've weathered that, most of the models are weathered, which is a bit more realistic that way. And last but not least, the Hornby Class 56 013, sound checked by Olivia's Trains. The servicing shed stroke uh, stabling point, uh, which is like this area, it's got to be detailed yet. But basically, you've got a um, fueling station here, fuel point, as they. The actual shed depot is a Keybury, I believe, pronounce it, kit model. Now, this was very plasticky when I bought the kit, so I had to sort of weather this down to make it more realistic. I did a few features. Basically, you've got floodlights there and internal lights. A few barrels there as detailing. We'll put some more detailing inside there. Overall, not a bad bit of kit really. There's an area here I didn't know what to do with. So we made it sort of a waste area land, um, overgrown, not really looked after, and I thought put a park in there, obviously some figures got to be added. Parks by Fowler and the um, Tom Akeris from Scale Scenics, just put a few weeds on there. There's a guy sitting over his lunch there as well, don't know where he's come from. Uh, the road next to that I've made from balsa wood, covered by... A self adhesive roadway, I can't remember the company who made that, but basically, these two sides here have painted their Pico, you can buy those separately, and I've weathered those as well. Again, the classic archway embankment, the side, which have weathered and overgrown with different sort of plants as well to make it more realistic. That basically goes into the back scene, so it's going into a major town or city. One of the latest scenes I've been trying to uh, work on at the moment is the station car park. Now the actual car park itself is a uh, download print from Scale Scenics. Highly recommended. It's weathered as well. I want to make the car park with a, a rough fence, so a chain link fence around there with a bit of wire for the bod wire. Got a few cars in here. Like Capri there. XR3, a Mini, I think that's a Corsair, and a full Cortina 2000 here I believe, a Scimitar. There's more cars to be added there as we go along. There's a little entry fence here, just zoom in, that goes to a substation, electrical intake there. Still got to work on that a little bit. I might do a little cameo scene with some guys working around there. But it just finishes that off nicely. 
There you go, that's a car park scene. And it's lit by street lights as well. This is the outside area of the layout that goes to the garden. Just focus into the tunnel, it comes out and goes back into the main layout in the garage. There you go, with a green light there. As you can see it goes right down to the bottom of the layout towards the house. It does take a lot of maintenance this due to the weather conditions. I'm not running it at the moment because it's winter and there's damp on the rails. The end straight double track here goes back into the garage in a, in a corner piece at the top there so it's quite a long stretch. And as you can see here it goes back on a loop, feeds back on itself. It needs a reversing loop module. Uh, with DCC to obtain the right current. And I wanted to extend the layout right around the garden. I've got a slight problem here. I've got residents living just here in the form of two guinea pigs. I'll just introduce them to you. Let me introduce you to Bubble and Squeak. They're the local residents here. They refuse to move. They're allowed to extend around the garden. Um, the back various council meetings and protests here. Uh, but no compulsory purchase is necessary. I think, I think they've won the case. But I've seen them train spotting before, so be aware, guinea pigs. Cleaning the track is an essential part of uh, using a live working layout. Now I'm using the CMX clean machine, which is of brass construction. Basically, there's a little drip feel at the bottom, and I'm using methylated spirits to clean the track. I find I have to do this more regularly in the winter. The summer and spring isn't too bad, but obviously the conditions change in the winter, so that has to be cleaned more regularly. Just going to show you with this um, tunnel section here. It goes into the other side of the garage, which has got a wall here. And eventually, I'm going to develop this side so the layout will be more than double the size it is now. Uh, obviously I've got a sort of uh, damp proof that section I'll get something to do that but basically it's just a two way track going around there and appears on the other side of the tunnel of the layout which is just here into the station but that will develop sort of next year onwards I'd say